there was a group called Avi and the Chipmunks back then, and they did that, and they received a letter from uh, the Alvin and the Chipmunks people uh, making them stop using that uh, technology because it was copyrighted. But anyway, using a harmonizer was not a uh, problem, so uh, we used a harmonizer, and Heshi talks into it for the voices of Kiwi and Tuki while I'm busy being country yussi, so we have a really live interaction going on. You are somebody who wrote the song, um, and then he patched me. And you right. also wrote a song that my kids were listening to just last night, <clears throat> a stranger song where you write, don't let anyone touch you. <laughs> don't talk Literally. to strangers, yeah. Don't talk to strangers, don't let them touch you. Well, not to get too political to answer your question, because uh, you, you see what's happening in the country here, uh, the cancel culture, what's going on, tearing down statues, and uh, the whole country is coming apart at the seams. You're right. Uh, could be uh, Peel One More Potato would not have been written today, but uh, that song was uh, written like 40 years ago when uh, things were normal. Th that song happened to be true. I mean, I had a Rebbe that uh, in those days, Rebbe used to punch the kids, say it's unacceptable. But in those days, they, they pulled my ear, they slapped my face, they kicked me on the way out of the door. What was the reaction yeah. and how did you know, how did you know that you had hit gold? How did you know, or did you know that Kiwi and Tuki was something that, that, that was well received? Well, everybody stopped me in the street and had an office in Borough Park and people were stopping me and said they love it and sales, you know, the biggest uh, marker is uh, how well it's selling. And we kept getting reorders and reorders and we knew we were onto something good. So we put out a new Kiwi and Tuki uh, every uh, year, just about. Uh, you know, while we were putting out the Country Us CDs every year as well. We were in a studio till three, four o'clock in the morning every night. Yeah, your feature. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, was that Ding Ding's, Ding's article? Yes, yes. And I was yeah. like, oh, hashkacha practice. I haven't read about Country Us in years, and suddenly he's in the magazine, and we're you know having a conversation mm, with him. Right. To be. But it's so, no secret that the 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 payment or the um, the reward, the financial reward, is nowhere near of you know the success that you, that comes with show business in the secular world. So, did you ever struggle with the fact that maybe Kibi and Tuki didn't buy you a mansion, or are you uh, completely at peace with the fact that what you did was a a spiritual contribution to you know Jewry at large? Right. No, look, we knew there was no uh, big money in, in Jewish music. Uh you know, period, uh, Country Yossi and the Stiebel Hoppers or Kivi and Tuki, unless you're Mordechai Ben David, Avram Fried or Yaakov Shweki. And Baruch Hashem, I had a profession as well. I was a diamond dealer for many years. Yeah, I also had a, uh, I went to college. I became a guidance counselor, but there were no uh, openings when I graduated for guidance counselors. There was a glut of guidance counselors. And you can't make a living from radio either unless you were very, very lucky. Rush Limbaugh? Which, Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about in the Jewish markets. You had Nachum Siegel, and you had you know, Zev Brenner, and you have uh, you had Country Yossi. Yeah, entertainment in general is very tough to make a living. Right. You're the only person making a living out of this. In, indeed. I'm living in my mansion here in Israel. Thanks for all the <laughs> money that I made over there. <laughs> right. Um, I think things are changing. One of the messages that I have in my masterclass is that if you do a good job, and if you are professional and consistent, and you always deliver, you're going to impress the audience. They're gonna rehire you. And Baruch Hashem, we, you know, the Jewish world is large. It's easy to travel. There's a lot of Chabad communities looking for entertainers. Um, I think there's room for a lot of talent, but I do think it's important that the better performers rise to the top so they, so they can take a charge that, you know, the premium prices. In your so, interview with A.B. Rottenberg, you had a listener that's a nurse and she was asking if she should leave her nursing job and go into music full time. And he said, right. don't leave the day job. He said, don't so, leave yeah, the day job. I, How did you choose which songs would be the right songs to transform and, you know, could be elevated? Now, I, I just want to preface this by saying I don't particularly love when Jewish singers borrow from secular music, especially when they don't make an effort to completely transform the message of the song. Right, well, let's say I hear a song on the radio in the car, and all of a sudden it strikes me that this would be a great song to write a parody to. If I hear the blind man in the bleachers, suddenly I say, what if I was a deaf man in the stable? Wow, that's an interesting concept. Hmm, Yom Kippur, you know, all of a sudden the whole song took, uh, you know, form in my mind and uh, I wrote that pretty quickly. 
uh, Big Bad John. I said, well, why don't I call it Big Bad Mice? It's funny, you know, Big Bad Mice is funny, you know, just, uh, just fun. tick tock, time is passing by, hug your mommy, hug your baby. But I'm not the regular songwriter. I'm not like A.B. Rottenberg or Yossi Green. These guys are professional pianists and they sit there with the, the piano and they know exactly how to uh, compose a song according to strict rules of composition. And they write beautiful material. Of course, I also like my original. In your, defense, in your defense, Bob Dylan, for example, <laughs> exactly, didn't call him a master composer and arranger, but he literally changed music. And at, in your essence, you're a teacher and you're an educator. And that came across very much in Kibi and Tuki because, like I said, like I said before, it doesn't matter if you're not a master arranger. Like you had what it takes. Well, the, the, the subtitle on the Kibi and Tuki albums is Torah Midos and Mitzvahs through laughter and song. We felt uh, that was the way to get to the hearts of the children. Uh, we didn't uh, write down to the children. We didn't talk down to them. We kept it on a very high level. The, even the comedy, it, it's stuff that the uh, adults can appreciate as well. And uh, a lot of people tell me that they're, now they're listening to it. When, a, when they were a kid, they didn't even get half the jokes. Now they're listening as they play it for their kids and they're laughing because they, they, real, you know, they realize uh, the humor there. Gracious, no, ah, blah, blah. Good one. Now I taught myself and uh, now a lot of kids sing that song in school and they learn it. I feel like we really contributed something there. The shame game, which by the way was a challenge for me because Hanala, Hanala, Bobanala didn't never really go for me. <laughs> Um, Death Man in the Stiebel was a, you know, a, was a, a huge song for so many people, Big Bad Mice, obviously Little Kinderlach, which became yeah. the most famous song after Happy Birthday. Did you, did you ask your question, how did that not make you rich? <laughs> Who said I'm not rich? Oh, okay. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> my personal favorite is Don't Talk Lush Never Don't, Are You Ready? And then you have, um, when you're davening, you're... My son is screaming, even me, don't, don't talk Lush and Hara, don't. If you were to release a proper songbook, let uh -huh. know. I will, I will give a swipe up on my Instagram so that people can have the country. As you <laughs> okay. But your material lives on. Never fear. You can go to sleep at night, resting comfortably that people. Uh -huh. That's nice. There. Heshi is uh, an accomplished musician on just about every instrument. So Heshi plays all the instruments on all the songs, basically. Uh, once in a while, we had to call in a uh, guitarist. Like I said, everything that I can't do, he does. And I just write the songs and so sing you don't, them. You don't, love, you don't love the technical stuff. If, if you had the budget, you would just hire people to write all the music, perform all the music. The fact that you actually have to create the musical playbacks is almost like a nuisance. You just want to be writing those songs and getting them heard. Right. I write the songs. I give them to Heshi, and that's he does the rest. Do you feel like... Um, a songwriter has to have a diverse chinuch in order to create meaningful Jewish music, or are, you don't. Maybe you don't pay so much attention to the Jewish scene. Jewish music today has evolved into something that uh, is not really recognizable to uh, people of my era. Uh, you know, occasionally, you find some uh, composers that are still writing great, great songs. But for the most part, I don't follow Jewish music. I think they all sound the same. They're all rhythm driven. They're not, uh, they're not as melodic as they used to be. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Shlomo Kalbach and Rabbi Sons and Shmuel Brazil, Bilvavi, Mehaish, those type of songs. Uh, what's happening today, I think- Something has they, been lost. Something has been yeah. lost. Yeah, I think they, like they say, the Deiris Veren Shvacher. I mean, the generations get weaker and weaker. What the Gemara talks about in learning, you know, but uh, the same thing applies to music. I think uh, uh, music has uh, gone off the rails in the secular world and uh, the Jewish world is not far behind. You know, they try to copy the secular world. And uh, yeah, there's a good song here and there, but I don't sit, I don't listen to Jewish music, basically. And the only version is like one of those great, he's one of those great composers out there today. Along with Yerachmiel Begun, those guys are still writing nice songs. Uh, yes, he had an idea for a song. He came to me to write the lyrics, and that song had, I think, eight million hits on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. More right? I think the women that are listening to this uh, podcast uh, should realize that they're it's a mitzvah what they're doing. If you you know you, if you can lift people's spirits in these in this day and age, if you can make some people happy, if you make them smile, and sometimes even if you can make them cry with a sad song that that's brings them to a hear her tshuva. Then you're accomplishing something that is fantastic.
I agree. And we're, we're big fans of your work. My favorite songs are the Musa songs, the serious songs. Uh, the funny songs, uh, you know, when I write them, they're a lot of fun. And uh, I, I enjoy listening to them uh, occasionally. But I would much rather listen to the TikToks than the uh, Zaydi song that I wrote. And uh, there's a lot of serious songs on there. Don't talk to strangers, that type of stuff. On one of the albums we have, uh, you know, who did a mitzvah? And, and Tuki says, I kissed my bubby. I said, that's not a mitzvah. He said, it's not? No. Then people called me. He said, kissing your bubby is a mitzvah. Why are you teaching kids that kissing their bubby How is not a mitzvah? How dare you? How dare you discourage children from kissing their bubby? <laughs> right? So I had to explain, you know, it's not in the Rambam's uh, Sefer mitzvahs, you know. There was one case where I was driving home from Staten Island over the bridge at midnight after my radio show. And I saw somebody look like a rabbi standing by the Barrazano Bridge in his shirt sleeves walking around. So I stopped the car. I said, what happened? He said, this car broke down. He needs a ride back to Borough Park if I'm going there. I said, I'll take you there. So he gets in the car. We're talking. He says, oh, you know, what's your name? I said, Yossi To. He says, you country Yossi? I go, yeah. I just, he says, you have the radio show? I said, yeah, I'm coming up on the radio show now. He says, you make the Kibi and Tuki? I said, yeah. He says, I'm the principal of some Sephardi Yeshiva. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say the name. Yeah, and he said this this week he was going to put out uh, send a letter to the parents not to to tell their kids not to buy Kipi and Tuki because he felt it wasn't uh, proper. But now that I picked him up and he met me and he's talking to me, he says, you know, children. And I don't think there's one topic you didn't cover. I mean, from Lashon Hara to keep it of the aim to to Hashava Saveda to you know, don't talking to strangers to keeping the house clean from eating better. I mean, it, right. the, the, the entire gamut, you even have a, a, a Corona song out. So you literally <laughs> could retire that you, you know, comfortably that you've basically um, written in about it all. Some, some uh, popular rabbi asked me to write a, a tune to Asher Yotza, which I did. And that's going to be on the next Kibi and Tuki album. So uh, Wait, what, is it called the yeah. bathroom song or you're, you're not going to say <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I have an English name for it, but there's Hashem Yatsar, and he wants the kids to learn it with a, with a melody so they can remember it by heart. But uh, we have some surprises on there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, the internet and Instagram has allowed me to reach a lot of people, right. and your music lives on, and we are grateful for your contribution, and I bless you with many, many more healthy years creating, composing, inspiring, and... Um, now, the truth is that what, what's so remarkable is that your audio really comes alive. Like, my, I feel the atmosphere in Kivi and Tuki's home. I felt the atmosphere in the, in the little world that you created. And that's so remarkable because there were no images. You literally just did it with sound. And as somebody who records regularly, I know you have to bring 150% to the microphone to get 75% back. So, you know, thank you for... for for giving us so much heart and soul over the years. Thank you for everybody for joining. I'm going to share. And thank you for having me and for inviting me. I appreciate it. Absolutely much success my, to you. My, absolutely. My pleasure. Have a wonderful summer. And I hope to um, hear from you again. You should open up an Instagram account. You're going to have at least 50 followers from my, from my, from my page alone. It matters. Right. That's why I wanted to right. do this with you today. Because when you see the person and the place that they're coming from it just makes such a huge difference okay we're gonna wrap it up with a small message for my son and then we're gonna go yeah. okay let's hear what, what did you say he said you should make a cereal called crunchy yussi <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea what idea was that that's, that's great, great. Yeah, if I do, I'm going to send him a free box. I love that crunchy SC cereal. And who's writing funny? Who's, who's writing funny material these days? Nobody. Me. I write for the Bella Bracha, and it's very oh. entertaining. Um, so me and you, we're the only two. I don't think we're the only two, but there, there, there's definitely room for more humor, especially with coronavirus. So I'm encouraging everybody watching. If you have anything funny to say or share or create, now is the time. Certainly.